I'm gonna put my hand up and say that I'm a pretty picky eater. I do turn my nose up at a few things and whilst I love food, I love to eat, there are certain things that I immediately hear a label for and I go, mm, don't like that, don't want a bar of it. And this really got me thinking about the decisions that we make on a really snap basis that don't serve us because they're not based off logic, they're not based off rational thinking, they're not really based off anything. And for me, I will put my hand up and say there have been so many dishes, meals, events, things that when I learn what's inside of a dish or a drink or something like that, whilst I was once really excited, suddenly I go, oh, actually, no, I'm fine. I won't take that. And the reality is if I had to shut up and eat it, I would have loved it. And um, so I started thinking about the correlation between this and our money because there are so many connecting pathways between this and the way that people make decisions about how they particularly invest above all other areas of financial management. Because when we start talking about these things, I hear people say again and again that they don't know how to do this, that they don't like it, that they don't understand it. And when we start probing, it's actually not the case. It's one element of this process has triggered something in our brains like, oh shit, there's olives in there. And we go, oh, oh no, I can't, I can't do this anymore. This comes up more often than not around share portfolios or investing in equities. And so I wanted to put the question out there, can what we know hurt us? How do we find this middle ground between understanding at an acceptable level of information, right? Because we can't just go blase into our, into our investments, but if knowing too much information, if getting too caught up in the glossary section of a product disclosure statement causes a sense of paralysis or inertia, do you need to read it? We know that product disclosure statements are there and designed for a compliance risk, right? They're legal documents to protect the product provider. But if it's going to cause you to change your course of action and not because you actually disagree with what you're doing, but because you're scared, because you don't understand anything, because there's a wording there that freaks you out, then is it actually helpful? This is the question I want us to consider and think about it. Maybe thinking about it in terms of your food, maybe thinking about it in terms of your fitness. Maybe you've heard that Pilates is really hard or yoga is boring or investments are tricky or whatever it might be. Think about some of those snap decisions that you've made and what they were actually based on. If you had your time again, would you do things differently? Because I'm willing to bet that for most of us, the answer is yes. We are not entirely rational creatures. We are not always logical beings. We don't make decisions on a perfectly rational basis. But when it comes to our financial health, more often than not, particularly for millennials, no action is what bites us in the butt. And so if fear, if uncertainty, if irrational thinking around certain labels in the investment space or financial space is causing you to stay in a state of inertia, then we need to pick up on that because no action is the guaranteed way to make sure you don't reach your financial goals and the intentions that you've set for your future. So next time you hear yourself saying those words, just stop and pause for a moment and ask the question, could I do this better? Could I do it differently? Could I do this even with less information? Because that way we can all move forward, take action and actually give ourselves a fighting chance of creating a really healthy financial future for ourselves.